And how's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here live from LA. And in this tutorial, we're gonna have my bro Herman Huang, AKA Coffee Liquor, teach us how to make a echo outline effect in After Effects. Guys, we are currently in another creative week and it's sponsored by Envato Elements. You can actually get a free month of Envato Elements in the link below, but more on that a little bit later. Coffee Liquor is gonna be releasing one video every day this week, diving into the incredible world of VFX. Coffee Liquor is an extremely talented VFX artist based out of Vancouver, Canada. Now in the link below, there's actually a project file that you can download so you can actually do the tutorial with me in real time. Try this though, watch this tutorial all the way through once, just sitting back and relaxing and soaking it in and then download the project file and then watch it a second time and then actually do the tutorial with me while editing with the project file. Herman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Josh, as always, for the sick introduction. How's it going, everyone? We're gonna learn how to do this trippy effect where it begins with an outline of a subject that echoes and expands to finally reveal the actual subject. Now, this can be applied to anything that you can think of, and it's fairly simple to do, so let's get right into it. Now, first, you're gonna need some footage to actually do this with. I recommend using something with a basic, clean silhouette. Otherwise, if you use something too messy, then it may not look too clean or intuitive when you're doing this outline effect. Now, in this case, we're gonna be using using this shot that I got from Envato Elements. Now you've probably heard Josh mention it once or twice about their wide range of stock footage and we're gonna be using that today. In this case, I've got this profile shot of this handsome gentleman that's walking down an alleyway. I don't know why, but it looks cool, so let's use it. Now you can follow along with this tutorial with the provided project file that's in the description below and the footage will be offline, unfortunately, unless you get the clip from Envato Elements, but you can always slap in your own footage or just take a sneak peek on how the project is set up. So open After Effects, check that footage in and let's get started by finding the frame that you would like to do the effect on. First, we're going to go to our footage that we imported the clip, we're gonna drag it onto this icon so it creates a new composition. We're gonna find a spot where we want to do the echo outline effect. In this case, I'm probably just going to use the first frame, why not? So we're going to duplicate this layer. We're gonna rename this to something like freeze frame because organization is key. It's better to know what we are working with. We're gonna right click it and we're gonna hit time and then under time, we go to freeze frame. And as you can guess, this will freeze the frame. So this man is now very still. And we're going to hit control K. The reason we're doing that is to bring up the composition settings. We're gonna rename this comp to main comp. We're going to resize this to whatever um, your delivery size calls for. In this case, I wanna upload on Instagram. So usually that means on portrait mode, the width would be 1080, height would be 1350. And sure, we'll keep it at frame. You know what, we're gonna, we're gonna spice it up. We're gonna go to something a little more cinematic and we're gonna go 23.976, very specific. We're going to hit okay. And we have this giant face now. And we're going to basically resize the footage into something that we think is appropriate. In this case, I'm going to highlight both of them, hit S to bring up the scale. And then we're going to resize him and also move him so that he's nice and centered like so. So I think that around here is a pretty good place to start. You can finesse it however you like, but this is a pretty good outline of this person. I can see exactly how the shape of this could look when we don't actually see him yet, meaning there's pretty good footage to work with. So next, what you're gonna wanna do is grab the pen tool up top over here, or you can hit G, it's up to you and we're going to create a stroke around the outline of this person. So there's a fill and there's a stroke. For the fill, you wanna make sure that there is no color, there's nothing to fill, because we're working with an echo outline effect. So the stroke, which will be our outline, we're gonna change the color to something like an off-white, and then we're gonna change the stroke size to whichever width that you think is appropriate. In this case, we're gonna start with just six, if After Effects will let me. There we go. So we're going to start by outlining this person. And then I'm going to speed up this process, but basically I want to outline around the silhouette of this person. So the tricky parts could be the hair, but as long as you get the rough shape of it, you should be okay. All right, so once you finish drawing your stroke with your pen tool, you can always adjust the stroke width, as I've said before, but I think six is pretty good. I think it was a pretty good width, so I'm gonna stick with it. We're gonna rename this to something else like outline. 
so that we know what it is. And then if I were to hide the rest of the layers by hitting the icon, I icon, ooh, get it? Should I make any more of these jokes? All right, we're going to hit this, which is toggle transparency grid, and it's going to basically show a black background and also the white outline. What we're gonna do now is animate the lines. So the first thing I wanna do with this outline is gonna to be totally up to you, but in this case, I am going to change the opacity. So I'm gonna click the outline, hit T to bring up opacity, and then zoom in so that it's gonna start with, let's say zero, hit the stopwatch to keyframe, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and I'm going to tell you about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning. They also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Hit the stopwatch to keyframe and then go a few frames forward and go to 100. And what this does is it's going to fade in like this. So you're keyframing from zero to 100. And basically after a few seconds, actually in this case, what's going on here? The time code is very odd. So I'm going to hit control K and then change the start time code to zero. And this makes it a little bit easier for myself to kind of calculate how much time is passing. Nice little tip for you to take away if you ever stumble across this problem. So let's say at about just under a second, we're going to have the stroke basically disappear. And I don't mean by thinning out but by actually kind of retreating itself. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. Clearly my range of vocabulary is not very wide. So why don't I just show you? We're gonna hit this arrow, and then it's going to basically show all this other fancy stuff, but we don't need to see the guts of this yet. We wanna hit add, the arrow next to add, and we're going to hit trim paths. And we're gonna add a trim paths, and what that does is it's going to basically trim the path as the name suggests. So under this, is the end position which is 100 so right now this is the full position of showing the whole outline but i'm gonna hit the stopwatch to keyframe it and then just a few frames forward i'm going to hit zero and what this does if i play it through as you can see it trims the path like so and you can always adjust the timing of this to whatever you think is suitable if i just fit up to 100 and show you what the entire thing looks like that's what it looks like animated. And then maybe I'll just move this back a little bit. You can play around with this and adjust this later as well, but you are done animating your outline. Now, of course, the effect is to have this outline to echo or reverb out. So we're gonna need multiple ones. So what you're gonna do is you're going to duplicate them. Let's start with one. So how I did that was by hitting the shortcut control D for those of you who don't know, and then work with the top one. And we're gonna do something a little bit weird. At least a little bit weird for me because we're going to add an expression, which is not something I work with very much, but I found one by Adam Plouf, who posted this on his Twitter. And what this does is it's going to retain the stroke width while you scale down. Now I'm gonna show you what the problem is. If I go to this outline layer and I hit S to bring up the scale, if I were to just scale this down like this, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go dramatic. We're just gonna go like this. You can see that the stroke width is much thinner than the one that we created previously. But I think that this effect will look nicer if the stroke width stays consistent. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. And then I'm going to bring up the contents over here and then go into shape and then go to stroke. And I know there's a lot to look at, but the thing that you're going to be playing with is the stroke width. That's the variable that we want to change. So we're going to hold Alt and then we're gonna click the stopwatch. And what this does is it's going to show an area where we can put in our own expression. Now, right now I am showing the expression that I'm using on the screen. However, we're gonna include it in the description below that lets you copy and paste it so that you don't have to memorize this or type it out number by number, word for word. So I'm just copy and pasting it and then I can click away. And what this does now is if I were to click this layer, hit S to bring up that scale again, and I were to scale it all the way down like this, I remember before how the stroke width would be thin. Now it's the same consistent width, but being a smaller size. So this is very helpful for effect. Props to you, Adam Plouf. Now I'm gonna hit Control Z because that's not how small I want it. 
yet. Um, I want to actually just go by increments of let's say 20. So basically if the outline over here was 100, I'm just going 80 and then I'm going to duplicate it, hit S to bring up the scale, go 60. And then this is all according to your taste. It's totally up to you, but something like this is pretty good. Maybe I'll do one more and do 20. So now we have five outlines that are animated. So they all fade in and then the path trim. And this is already looking pretty trippy, but we're gonna add another layer to this cake to make it a little more interesting. And we're going to offset the time for these outlines. So I want to start with revealing the small one, which is this top layer over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically stagger all these other layers underneath. And it's totally up to you how you wanna do this. You can do this manually, or you can do this with a plugin. Um, you, there are free plugins as well that you can stagger layers, but there's only five layers here. So I'm just gonna do it manually. I'm gonna shift it by two frames over. Go to the ones underneath, two frames over. Go to these ones underneath, two frames over, and two frames over. And then this is what it gives me. So pretty cool. And if you wanna adjust the timing of it, you can totally do so. So when I play it through, looking pretty cool. So I'm going to take all these outlines. I'm going to hit Control Shift C so that I can pre-compose it. That way I have less layers in this composition and it just gives me less of a headache. I like keeping things organized and I encourage you to do so as well. We're gonna call it outline. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Outline animated. And then we're going to trim it to the point where it is done, which is around here. I'm gonna hit Alt right bracket and that'll trim everything away so that it just leaves me with this beautiful outline that I just created. Now, before we continue, if you're liking the video so far, please check out my Instagram page, at Coffee Liquor, and you can see what I've been working on. Shoot me a DM if you wanna chat, or if you've got any questions as well, cause I'd be more than happy to reply back. All right, let's continue. So at this point, you've already done the bulk work of the echo effect. You're pretty much kind of done. At this point, everything else is extra. So if I go to the reference video, I can see that there were some lines that were shooting out from the middle. So let's create that right now, since it's pretty easy. Very similar to what you've done before, we're gonna take the pen tool. We're gonna find the middle part of where we want the lines to be shooting out. Now I can eyeball it or I can hit Alt, and I believe this is quotation marks to bring up the grids. And I can find the middle point where I can take my pen tool get one point up there and then one point up here. And then as you can see, there is this nice line if I hide the grid with the same shortcuts. Now, just like before, I'm going to trim the path. I'm going to toggle this so that brings up more options for myself. I'm gonna add an effect, which is trim paths, exactly the same as what we did before. In this case, we're going to actually have it shoot out from the middle. And we're gonna do this by hitting the stopwatch to keyframe the end position. So that's 100 over here. A few frames beforehand though, we're going to set it to zero. So in this case, it's gonna shoot out from the center kind of like that. Now, in this case, I want it to trim away from the center to end this kind of animation for this line. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for start, which is at zero right now. And then a few frames ahead, I'm going to go to 100. And what this does is if I just kind of solo this layer, which is by hitting this over here on the left, you can see that the animation is like this. To make it all smoother, quick tip is to highlight everything and hit F9, which will easy ease the keyframes. And without getting into it too much, basically it just smoothens out the motion. So when I unsolo this, you can see that it does this. Now you're gonna duplicate this line as many times as you like. You can go up to a thousand if you want, but the whole image might just end up white. So, okay, maybe not a thousand. Let's duplicate it once and then hit R to bring up the rotation. We're gonna rotate it, let's say 45 degrees. It's just something really simple. Duplicate it again, hit R, 90 degrees. And then we're gonna do this several times, as many times as we like. I'm gonna duplicate this again, hit R and go 135, I believe. Oh my gosh, my math is terrible. As you can see, I'm a video editor, not a mathematician. And finally, I have this. So I have some lines shooting out from the center, like so. Now, in this case, I don't want it to protrude outside of this outer line. I wanna keep it nice and neat within the animation. And a quick way to do that is, first, I'm gonna collapse everything by hitting Control A to highlight everything, and then hitting U, and then U again, so that I can see all my layers without all these keyframes everywhere. And I'm going to pre-comp this. As you can tell, I like pre-comping things by hitting Control Shift C again, and we're gonna call it lines. Actually, we'll call it straight lines. There we go. 
Guys, I hope you've been liking this tutorial so far. I'd like to just say if you can just click the like button and subscribe to this channel and then make sure that you click the notification bell. That's great for the algorithm. It's just going to be telling YouTube that we're doing a great job and it's going to inform you every time we release a new video. We got so much great stuff that we're currently creating for you that's coming out real soon. Actually, we'll call it straight lines. There we go. A little bit less confusing. And we're going to create a map. And we're not gonna create it from scratch. We're gonna use the outer line of the one that we created earlier. So we're gonna go into the pre-comp of the outline animated, which is where all these things are. We're going to find the outer one, which I believe is the bottom one over here. We're gonna copy it by hitting Control C, going back to our main comp and Control V. And this is gonna be on top. And it doesn't look anything different right now, but remember that fill layer that we changed it so that it wouldn't show up? We're gonna actually change the fill to a solid color like this. And then we're gonna change the fill to white. And then we can use this as a luma mat. So what that does is basically tell this layer, this one over here, which parts of the image should be showing. So we're going to go to the track mat over here. If you don't see this, then you can go to the toggle switches in mode, but we're going to click this and we're gonna hit luma mat. And what do you know? It's like a nice little cookie cutter so that you don't see the lines bleed out. Now, if I extend this layer and play this through, as you can see, it's a little bit odd. And the reason being is because I used the same layer that I used for the outline effect. So if I hit U and look at all of these things that I've already done to it, I'm gonna delete all of it, make sure that the opacity is 100, and then play it again. And it's starting to look better, except I think that it can be timed in a way where, let's say, it reveals the moment that we see this outer layer. Otherwise, it's a little bit weird how it's protruding. So kind of like this looks a lot better. There we go. And we can always retime this if we wish. So if you've made it this far, you are almost done. What you want to do is turn on that freeze frame. And then basically, I'm going to hit T to bring up the opacity. And I want to reveal this image the moment that the outer layer is basically showing. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch over here to keyframe it. Hit zero over here. And then just kind of move it around and boom. There we go. And then around this point, I kind of want the footage to start playing so that it's not you know, too static, but that's totally up to you. Essentially your outline effect is already done, but I'm going to basically take this, which is the footage that we did not freeze frame. I'm gonna put it on top of the freeze frame layer and then time it so that it's placed over here. So starting from around here, I am hoping that it will play. So from the very beginning, and boom, congratulations, you are done the effect. Now let's quickly look at this other comp that I made where it's a little more refined and I added some other effects to it. And I'll walk through exactly what I did to make it a little bit fancier in case you wanna add some final touches to give it that coffee liquor feel. So one of the things was adding a chromatic aberration, which you can either use a plugin, in this case I use Red Giant's chromatic aberration from their universe series, or you can do it manually in After Effects, which is pretty easy to do. It's a very simple RGB effect. And if you don't know how to do that, then drop a comment down below and maybe we'll do a tutorial about it. And another thing I did was I overlaid some texture underneath. So what I did was I took a glitchy monitor type of effect over here. I'm just gonna change the opacity to 100 so you can see and added a glow to it. And I got this from Envato Elements. As you can see, they've got motion graphics that you can choose from as well. I'm just gonna undo all this. And then I have this texture this kind of like chalky texture in the background. So it's not just a simple black. And then I added some noise to it. So those are some optional things that you can add. And essentially that's the only difference between what we taught earlier and what you see now. But once you're happy with your animation, all you have to do now is hit Control M to bring it into your render queue. And then you can render it to whatever settings that you would like. If it's going on Instagram, usually I like using H.264, which is not appearing over here, but you can queue it in AME, which will give you more render settings to choose from. And that is it. It's as simple as that. You can use it in your next title sequence or promo video, anything you can think of really. And Josh and I are both excited to see what you guys come up with. Now, as always, stay tuned for the next tutorial from both Josh and myself. And if you haven't done so already, check out my Instagram at Coffee Liquor to see what I've been up to. And until the next time, take it away, Josh. Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible VFX tutorial. Please make sure to watch all the other incredible tutorials that we have in this month's Creative Week with Herman Huang. I got two more videos for you to check out right here. Remember to get your free month of Envato Elements in the link below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.